In this problem, we're going to prove that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared is equal to 0. So before we do this problem, we should briefly go over the definition. So we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to L. So we can say that this means that for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some positive number, say capital M, such that, as t means such that, for all x bigger than m, f of x gets close to l, so the distance between f of x and l, which is the absolute value of f of x minus l, can be made how small? How small? Smaller than epsilon. So for any epsilon, so you can make it really, really small because it holds for all epsilon that are positive, so the distance is less than every single positive number. So in essence, uh, it's, it's almost there. It's really close. So in this problem, um, our f of x is 1 over x squared. So let's go ahead and figure out the problem, and then we'll go through a formal proof. So this is the scratch work. This is not the proof. This is the part where we figure it out. So let's work backwards. We need to find an m such that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. f of x minus l less than epsilon. Let's go ahead and fill everything in. So f of x is going to be 1 over x squared. And l in this problem is 0. So we have absolute value of 1 over x squared minus 0 is less than epsilon. All right, good stuff. So this is 1 over x squared less than epsilon. I dropped the um, absolute value uh, because uh, x squared is always going to be positive here. X is, x is positive in this case, right? X is approaching infinity, so you can treat it as a positive number. Let's go ahead and solve for x. So um, let's see. We want this to be true, so let's multiply by x squared. This will give us 1 less than epsilon times x squared. Then we can divide by epsilon. So divide by epsilon, divide by epsilon. So you want x squared um, to be bigger than 1 over epsilon. So x, if x is bigger than uh, the square root of 1 over epsilon, everything here uh, should work. Okay, so we're going to take, we're going to choose an m bigger than uh, the square root of 1 over epsilon. You can do that by something called uh, the Archimedean principle. So given any number, you can find a natural number that is bigger. So we're allowed to uh, do that thanks to Archimedes. Okay, so let's go ahead now and formally go through the proof. So let me change color here. So the proof here starts by... Um, saying let epsilon be greater than zero. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it here and then we'll continue it uh, below. I wanna keep the definition on the screen as we start it. So proof, let's put PF. So you start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. And now since epsilon is defined, uh, we can say choose, again, we're invoking the property of Archimedes here, choose a natural number M bigger than the square root of 1 over epsilon. Okay, so we've satisfied now the second piece of the definition. So uh, via the Archimedean principle, we have shown existence. So now we just have to satisfy this, the rest of this definition. So then, let me scroll down here, okay. For all x bigger than capital M, we have, so it's f of x minus l. So f of x is 1 over x squared minus 0. And we know that's the absolute value of 1 over x squared. And we know that's equal to 1 over x squared. And so now we're going to carefully, and this is really beautiful, we're going to work backwards. Watch this. So note, we said for all x greater than m, so x is greater than m. But we know something about m. It's greater than the square root of 1 over epsilon. So x is bigger than, x squared rather, is bigger than 1 over epsilon, squaring both. 
and that would mean that if you divide by x squared and multiply by epsilon at the same time, uh, let me maybe not do that. Um, let's just go ahead and multiply by epsilon. Okay, and then now divide by x squared. So that would give us epsilon greater than one over x squared. In other words, so it est one over x squared is less than epsilon. So thus, let's to, just to reiterate what we just did, the absolute value of one over x squared minus zero is equal to one over x squared, which is less than epsilon. And that completes the proof. We have satisfied the definition. Notice how I wrote it again here at the end and said thus. That's just for added clarity, right? The, the proofs, your proof should be clear and elegant. That's the most important thing. That Clarity is the most important thing. Um, there's plenty of uh, bad proofs. You want your proofs to be good. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.